So you've been approved for the non-lucrative visa, picked up your visa, and arrived in Spain. Congratulations, or enhorabuena. But don't get too comfortable, because you've still got a lot to do. In this video, we will go over what you do after you get the visa and arrive in Spain, so you don't make any mistakes that could jeopardize your stay and undo all that hard work you did to get the visa in the first place. Specifically, I am going to cover what documents you need to gather, the order you need to gather them in, timelines, how to fill out the online application, and share our experience. This video will specifically focus on the Padron step, or how to empadronarse. Hola, timid investors. This is Tara from the channel She Saves, He Invests, they travel, offering personal finance strategies and travel tips that work for ordinary people. Please remember to like and subscribe. And also, click on the links in the description below. And if you stay until the end, I have a bonus for you. All right, timid investors, vamonos! Con ánimo! So I'm not covering what a non-lucrative visa is, nor how to get one. We're jumping right in after you've gotten the visa and already arrived in Spain. And I also want to say that this video is pretty Madrid-centric, so keep that in mind. So these are the steps that you're going to need to go through after you arrive in Spain. One, you're going to need to find a place to live that offers you a lease that's longer than six months. Two, you're going to need to padrón or empadronarse, basically register that lease with the local authorities. Three, you need to secure a fingerprinting appointment with the police. Four, you need to gather all the documentation you're going to need at that appointment. Five, you're gonna to need to attend the appointment, submit everything, and then wait so you pick up your TIE. I'm gonna explain each of those steps in turn, but this video is going to focus on step two, getting the Padron. You need to find a place to stay that allows you to sign a lease that's six months or more. But when you first arrive, you're probably going to need to find a place that serves as like a landing space, basically a base that you can search for more long-term places. So that place is gonna be a hotel or a hostel or an Airbnb or something like that. That hunt for an apartment that's more long-term is gonna take you about two to three weeks. Once you've secured a place, make sure the duration of stay is included on the lease and that it's at least six months. Make sure your full name and the Spanish address of the apartment you're renting is on the lease. If you are a family or a couple or you have roommates, make sure both your names are on the lease. Try to get your NIE and your passport numbers both on the lease and I'll explain later why. Make sure the lease is signed by both the lease, both leaseholders, if you have more than one person staying in the apartment, and the landlord or the real estate agent. At this point, you should be about two and a half weeks, three weeks into your stay. So now you need to empadronarse, or register your lease with the local authorities. If you think you will sign a lease in the next few days, or maybe even the week before you sign the lease, you can go ahead and start looking for padron appointments online. Note that in some smaller towns, you don't need to make an appointment, you can just walk in. Those are towns that are 30,000 people or less, but for big cities like Madrid, you're going to need to click on this link, and it's also in the description, to make your appointment or cita. Here's how you do it. Pick the first link that says pedir cita previa. Tipo de servicio, you need to choose atención a la ciudadanía. So attention to the citizen. Gestión, choose padrón. Do not choose certificado de padrón. I made that mistake. Just choose padrón on the drop down menu. Okay, oficina. There are many offices to empadronarse. One in each district, at least. And by district, I mean neighborhood. So the closest office to us was the central office on the drop-down menu, which is on Calle Atocha, near the Anton Martin Metro. You can make your cita there, or if it's full, you can choose another neighborhood. So go ahead and select the date next. You're very likely to get a message that tells you that all the available dates for the location you've chosen are taken. So if that happens, try two things. One, change the location, or two, change the date. So you can see me here switching to different months using the calendar. You can see that all the dates are slashed through, indicating that they're taken. Then you can see me changing the location. There are several locations in Madrid, like I said, one in each neighborhood. There are probably a similar amount of locations in other large Spanish cities too. 
So keep doing this. Keep changing the location and or the date or both until time slots become available on the right. So when you see some available time slots, click on one. Input your personal information. Choose to input your NIE or passport number. If you need to secure another Padron appointment for whatever reason, you can choose the number that you didn't use. For example, if you chose your passport number, then you can use the next time your NIE and it, the system won't recognize you as the same person. Sometimes it's advantageous. You need a Spanish phone number to be able to do this. It's going to send a confirmation to your phone. Push crear cita, which means create appointment. Your time slot might already be taken by the time you input all your data. So yes, if that happens, which it probably will, you're going to have to go through the whole process again. You might have to do it three, two or three more times for it to stick, for you to be able to get a day and time that's not taken. If you have successfully created a cita, you will get a confirmation number sent to your email. Go ahead and print that email, even though you can show your mobile when you arrive on that day. So the next thing you need to do is go to the Padron appointment, right? So they typically don't let you in unless you have an appointment and they really don't let you in early. So there's not a whole lot of reason to show up more than five or 10 minutes early. There's a way to Padron someone else in your household too. So if you want to try, go ahead and take all of that person's documents, which I'm going to explain later what documents you're going to need. It never hurts to ask. And apparently in some cities, you can bring the person's signed documents and Padron, both of you, with the other person being absent. Okay, so what to bring? You really only need to bring two documents, which I'll explain in turn. I mean, besides your cita, printed out or on your mobile phone, you need your signed lease with the receipt showing proof of payment. You also need a valid ID, and in this case, it's probably gonna be your passport. You can bring your NIE, the one that the consulate emailed to you on the A4 sheet of paper, but that's not a valid legal document. So if you want a Padron using your NIE, I would try showing that A4 piece of paper and the visa inside your passport that has the NIE printed on it. This is what ours looks like. Okay, so our experience. I got the Padron immediately, no problem. This is what it looks like. But the administrator who granted the Padron said that I would have to return after I picked up the TIE and show it to change my Padron to use the NIE instead of the passport number. Let me explain briefly again. Now the TIE, or it's TA, not to be confused with the NIE, is the actual identity card. The NIE is just a number. Your TIE will have the NIE on it. A lot of people use these words interchangeably. They are not interchangeable. People will say their NIE expired. NIEs are permanent, they don't expire. TIE cards expire. That A4 piece of paper with your NIE that you got emailed to you from the consulate, like I said, is not an official document. If I wanted my NIE on my Padron, what I should have done is shown that document, that piece of paper, and the visa with the NIE. And that might have been accepted, and I might have been able to Padron with my NIE on the Padron certificate and not have to return. A few weeks later, when it was my husband's turn to Padron, there were a few more bumps in the road. We couldn't secure an appointment in the center, so he had to Padron at the Ayuntamiento next to the Matadero in uh, Legazpi, which is in the region of Arganzuela. Thank God I went with him because he called me in dur during his appointment. Typically, you're not allowed to enter unless you have an appointment yourself, which I didn't. I was pretty surprised that I was able to sl slip past security, which is the uh, government official that checks your appointments at the front. She had already told me to wait outside because I didn't have an appointment. But I guess she was busy or wasn't looking and I went straight in, right up to the counter where two government employees were trying to help Chris with his case. So they said that because I didn't have Chris's name on the lease, they needed my identification and proof that I lived there, we lived together, and I was who I was, right? And I didn't bring my passport or any ID. But Chris had a photo of my old passport on his phone. 
they wouldn't accept it because that passport number didn't match the number that I padroned with because my passport expired and I got a new passport and I used that number to padrone with. This is why you need to use your NIE if you can. <laughs> so I managed to up, go into my Gmail on my phone and pull up a picture of my new passport, but it was unsigned, so they wouldn't allow me to use that as a valid ID, even though that passport number matched my Padron. So Chris then showed them a photo of my American driver's license, and oddly enough, they accepted it. And because you stayed, here's the bonus. So here's the moral of the story. One, put both of your names on the lease. Two, try to re represent both members of the household when you padrone if you can. Three, if you have to each padrone separately, always bring your passports for both of you. Four, go to each other's appointments. Even if all you can do is wait outside, you never know if the other person will need to be called in. Five, sign your passport. <laughs> Six, show the NIE on your visa if you want to padrone using your NIE and not your passport, which I highly recommend you do. Seven, have pictures of your most recent IDs and documents on your phone.